Hey, did you know that Dinosaurs was the first primetime series that was fully automatronic? Uh, what's it? Automatronic? Automatronic. No, no. Autumn? Autumn. Because we started in autumn. Autumn. Right? Automatronic. You know what automatronics are? It's, I don't. Yeah, it tends to fall. Yeah. A lot. It falls down and collapses. Hello, and welcome to Sin Clarity, a dinosaur's tale. And uh, I'm one of your hosts, Ben Hand Up Me, and I'm here with another one of your hosts. We're going to need another Timmy. How are you doing today, Timmy? I am good. I'm very excited for the episode that we're uh, releasing today. <laughs> I was going to say recording, I... <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess when they listen to it, it'll, it'll make sense, depending on. If they listen to it on release day, but I, yeah. I, what I'm really excited about is that you did not lose your Lego piece that you thought you lost. Oh my god! Last night. <laughs> it was stressing me out. I assume that you thought you flushed it down the toilet with that spider that you got in a fight with. No, uh, <laughs> it was in my hand. I was building it. I was in my hand, and it just fucking <laughs> slipped, and it hit. So I had the box, the the box next to me with all the plastic that all the pieces come in and i just put it yeah and i go each bag and i yeah. knew it hit the bag i was like oh shit is it in the box and i'm like ripping over the box and it's nowhere to be found <laughs> so i'm like okay it must have bounced off and went under the dresser or under the <laughs> under the fucking uh stand here like the the desk and we could not find <laughs> it we swept under everything and then Amazing. like isa was ready to pay three dollars and fifty cents to have the ten cent piece mailed to us <laughs> <laughs> and i w i did one last check and it was down where there's a bunch of computer paper down at the bottom here and i like shook everything out and then i like looked <laughs> down in the little corner of under the desk and there it was covered in fucking cat hair <laughs> what a what a amazing story though <laughs> yeah I'm so glad you found it and didn't spend three fifty on just shipping for a ten cent piece. <laughs> ten cent little piece is like this big. Uh, but yeah, the other exciting thing is that we're uh, about to interview Bill Beretta and Gene Beretta, and you might know them from they have a podcast called The Beretta Brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Beretta was the guy inside the Earl Sinclair costume, which is <laughs> awesome. Also, you know Pepe the King Prawn. Um, Ralph the dog, Bobo the bear, like he he's a bunch of Muppets. Yeah, he's also it, uh, an executive producer. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked on the uh, 2015 The Muppets ABC series. Great show. Where he performed and he produced, I assume. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's been with the Henson Company for a long time. And yeah. uh, his brother Gene has also worked with the Henson Company. Yeah, he worked. Uh, he did some storyboard art for Muppets from Space, and uh, besides that, Gene also is like a really talented author of children's books and illustrator. Yeah, so, uh, and he's on that. They have, they have a podcast together where they just recently did like a run of dinosaurs episodes. That was really cool. Yeah, you should you should check it out. It's uh they did is they call it a dinosaur month, so it's mm -hmm. four episodes at where they discuss every single character. And they talk to the voices of the character, the performer, the quote-unquote puppeteer who who worked the mouth and the teeth, and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> everything. Like they, uh, the first episode has Brian Henson in it. He's on the call, so it's really yeah. cool. So, like, I'm sure you'll learn a lot from watching all that, but we'll try to fill in some gaps with what we asked them as well today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and you should go and check it out. Uh, it's all on YouTube. Just search the Beretta Brothers, and you'll find it on YouTube, their, yeah. their podcast. Yeah, and you'll find their websites, like thebrettabrothers.com. And they're on Twitter as Bill Beretta and Gene Beretta. Their tags are pretty straightforward. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we'll, just, we'll just go ahead. Like At this point, we'll just transition to that, and we'll catch back up with you guys alone for the outro later. Yep. 
So enjoy Sinclarity, a dinosaur's tale, a very special episode. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's cool uh, because you're siblings and you do the show together, and I think that's really cool that you guys can oh yeah can do that. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's an interesting dynamic. What what made you two want to start doing the Beretta Brothers podcast? Well, I mean, somebody we... introduced us one week after COVID. <laughs> well, I was going to say we were on the actually we were on the phone and we had just finished our last robbery and we were thinking, you know, do we really want to keep? doing this one of us is gonna you know what i mean it just wasn't good so we yeah. thought what else could we tell do? them the truth tell them the truth actually we were, we were talking and we thought <laughs> oh, we're so goddamn awesome we should share ourselves with the people yeah she said i am so great and i was like i am so great and uh we just thought why how can we keep that away from people <laughs> the, real, the real answer is i was doing a couple on my own like book related ones and then uh billy came on and played around on one with me and we had so much fun that we just thought and and both of our work we had slowed down because of COVID. so mm -hmm. we thought this is the perfect time to just try and put something together um that's really that's it's as simple as that there was the time to start it much yeah, more that. exciting when we were giving up robbery, but yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> well, you yeah. got to get out before the one big heist because that's when you get arrested. Or exactly, <laughs> like Butch and Sundance, you know, it's they were giving that. it up. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. good you had something to segue into instead, just the to... yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ours, ours was pretty much kind of born the same way, except we're not brothers, and uh, uh -huh. we were not just going like, to Tim. It was like in co, <laughs> we were in lock, you know bored and ben wanted to start a podcast with me and i was just like hey do you like to show dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> and ben's like i've never seen it i'm like all right perfect i've seen it <laughs> oh that's cool that essentially i mean like you know i i was born in 1990 so and i'm the youngest of four and we had like VHS tapes of just recorded episodes from the show throughout the house but i was so young when my siblings were still watching those that i just have like had brief memories like i remember like specific parts of certain episodes i remember the baby obviously because that's the right. takeaway that everyone had so i remember the catchphrases and like the mcdonald's <laughs> toys or something probably. yeah yeah which yeah. i which i have all of all right <laughs> well yeah because we 1990 that was the year jim henson passed away and that was the year mm -hmm. we started getting ready to to make the thing you know yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I guess that kind of goes into like our, our first question, Bill. How did you get involved with the the Henson Company? Oh, it's too long and boring. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get involved? Well, I mean, I guess it goes back to working at an amusement park with Brian Henson, meeting him in the summer of 19... It was the summer of 1982. <laughs> um, yeah, 81 or 82. Yeah, and then just over the years we kept in touch. He went off to college. I went off to just work and study acting and things like that, and wanted to be an actor. and And we just kept in touch over the years. And I had moved to New York, and then Brian's father passed away, and we kind of came together in a way at that point. Um, and then I moved out to California, and I was living out here, uh, trying to find work, you know. And um, he came out to visit. Uh, the towards I guess it was the beginning well not long after his father passed man it was like maybe September of of 90 and uh we were just talking we were hanging out and he said you know I'm gonna I'm uh, gearing up to do this show about dinosaurs and there's it's the you know we're using the technology of, that we used on Ninja Turtles and I said oh wow you know I'd love to come and just but whatever I'll sweep the floors whatever I just need to be closer <laughs> to it because I was literally traveling from this won't make any sense to you but from long beach north long beach which is south of los angeles mm -hmm. like a half hour or so uh i would go back and forth to come closer to hollywood to work so i was working in restaurants closer to hollywood so that maybe i would meet people you know mm -hmm. uh and find a way and i could audition up here closer to it and anyway so i just said can i what can i do and he said well you know what i mean we're we're doing auditions and we need people inside of these big rubber suits. And if you're into that, maybe you want to come and audition for that. And I was, I said, yeah, 
I would love to do that. So I went and auditioned and um, fortunately I got it. So in, you... I think it was October, November, I was in London doing fittings for the suit. Oh, that's wild. Did you have any like similar work experience before that? Like <laughs> any well, mascot not... work? <laughs> No, not in suits. <laughs> My acting training was all based in uh, interpreting dialogue through behavior. That's really what the Meisner technique, the Stanislavski Meisner technique is, is you're interpreting dialogue through your behavior. And so I just thought, well, that's what I do, you know? So yeah, I didn't have to actually cool. do the dialogue because there was going to be another performer, a puppeteer doing the head and the manipulations that would create the guide track, right, for, yeah. for, for post. So I was inside hearing the puppeteer, being able to communicate back and forth with each other. And so I knew the script, but I didn't have to do the lines. I could just interpret and think about how do I portray what he's feeling and saying through my body language. That, that uh, is relevant. We asked a few, like, friends of ours and people who listen to our podcast about, like, questions they might have for you. And uh, mm. one of them from our friend Adel Rafai, who has a podcast, uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern, and Haber Riddle, he specifically asked whether you trained in, like, mime or clowning or commedia dell'arte. No, or not at all. Because he was just yeah. uh, very interested in how you were so expressive while without talking, essentially. Oh, right. So, well, like, Billy didn't the... speak the first six years of his life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was of, a lot of mind a lot going of on, naturally. It's a, yeah. You got you to gotta save up all the good talking for when you're older. <laughs> That's right. Valuable when when people can see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I uh, you know, no mime training or anything. It's really, it's really about just, uh, you know, acting about, and it, it is, I mean, to me, that's the best kind of acting when you can turn off sometimes, you know, you can turn off the TV and still kind of follow what's going on and you can sense mm -hmm. at least uh, a feeling and tell by people's behavior what's happening, you know, in a scene. And so, no, it's just... You no, know we should try right now. We should just try, don't say anything and okay. let's see how much your listeners can pick up on what our intention is. Well, I'm talking about a visual, not, not an audio uh, thing, Gene. <laughs> I'm talking about, what, you know, the visual of it. Play with it. All right, go ahead. Ask me a question. We'll see how... All right. Okay, uh, let, we'll ask you a question real quick from one of our friends. Um, okay. We'll do one that I was going to throw away. Uh, my friend Phil Horseman wants to know if the baby was rude in real life or just in the show. <laughs> oh, Bill's gone back to bank robbing. <laughs> Bill nailed it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I got to say, I hope Kevin Clash doesn't listen to this. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> so did you get any of that? At all? Yeah. 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 Is it clear? See, he's good. Yeah, he's See? good. See how I do? <laughs> that six years of experience really paid off for you. Yeah. <laughs> and we we won't we won't supply our interpretations of it because we'll let the listeners decide. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to color how they feel about it. <laughs> Was the baby really rude? No, just just Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> just Kevin. <laughs> uh it, going back to how you used like your movement and stuff to kind of build the character uh when earl because earl does a lot of dancing was that mm. you doing the dancing bill or was that someone else in the suit doing the dancing oh no it was me it's it just, was yeah that's the, <laughs> the only time anybody else was in the suit was uh there's a guy named tom fisher who also worked on the show and tom did what we called the unisaurs Mm -hmm. uh, he would do mm -hmm. some of the other, you know, additional supporting characters, and a lot of them. He was great, but he he actually did, except for the last shot in the opening sequence where Earl says, "Honey, I'm home." Uh, he did all of the walkings and movement stuff oh. in that, and then he also was Pearl in the Earl and Pearl. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Ben's not and, there yet, so don't don't spoil it for Ben. I've, I've seen screenshots. I know what <laughs> oh right, <laughs> I was his sister, right? Yeah. So yeah. so. Tom was uh, his sister. And then he also, I think he did, is it, I don't know, what, is it We Say So Land or something? They go to an amusement park or something? Yeah, yeah. And so I was sick. So I he was Earl for that, most of that episode, I think. But other than that, uh, the suit, uh, I was the only one in that suit that was dumb enough to get in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever yeah. have, did you ever have days where you were sick and still had to work in the costume? Because, uh, we had heard a story from uh, Tim Doyle about, I think he said it was Leaf threw up in his costume once. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it sounds like the worst case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> I, you fainted, didn't you faint? 
Yeah, well, yeah. So, so, I, yeah, there were times when I was sick, uh, and I would just go anyway. Um, and you hope to sweat it out because that's really what you did. Once you got in, it was just a lot of sweating and a lot of liquids. Like a NASCAR and, driver. <laughs> yeah, so we we probably got rid of illnesses pretty quick because we hydrated so much. We got uh, the solution to the coronavirus right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oof. So yeah, there was a period where it was early on the the head, the jawline of the head. When I would turn my head, it would cut off my carotid artery, oh, and I would pass out. And so <laughs> I wasn't sure why it was happening at first. You know, wow. I was like, what? And I would be like out and then we had to figure it out. And so I would do these little tests <laughs> where I would let Mac know. I was like, okay, Mac, you know, here we go. I'm going to try it. I'm turning my head. Mac, I'm doing, uh, oh, and then Jesus. people would just come running in, <laughs> take the head off. And so, but it was so heavy. Uh, and then that it came down kind of low. And, and so when I would turn, it would do that. But so then, John Criswell, who worked in the shop, lightened up the head. He used a different, he used a carbon fiber, which made the skeleton of the head lighter mm -hmm. and also um, shaved the jawline, I think, where it was kind of getting in the way. So we got rid of that. But yeah, I used That's to pass out. That's intense. Like, thank God they put that little seat in there for you then. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have made it without the seat. Did uh, uh, any of the other costumes have that seat or were you the only one who... Uh... I mean, like, uh, you had the biggest costume for the most part. Yeah, no, I don't think any other one had enough room, probably, mm -hmm. to fit a seat. Good, uh, good, thing, good thing Earl's packing uh, junk in his trunk. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it also forced me to keep my legs wider, you know, because he had mm. such wide legs. Yeah. Big legs. So it that also kind of helped to dictate how he walked as well, you know. So I tried <laughs> to use that a bit because the seat was there. What was the... Uh... Uh, could you kind of like go through like what was like a day for filming for you? Like what was that like for you? Gene, you want to answer that? Well, <laughs> he, uh, he got up with a glass of orange juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, I mean, well, all, the hours were always different because well, what's it called when you uh, you have to have so many hours between stopping and restarting? Twelve right? hour turnaround. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So schedule was always unpredictable. I was out there at the time, so I was living with him part of the time. So I would, I would see the insane schedule that he had to keep. <laughs> um, but it was just your life was pretty much committed to the show. It was just very little time outside of it to do much. Yeah, other than you know. sleep. What was uh, what was your work life at the time, Gene? Were you an author back then already, or? No, I wasn't yet. I was. Uh, I moved out the, a year after Billy, just to because I went to film school, and so I went out there just to explore the you know working in the film world, mm -hmm. and so I was just working as a production assistant at different places, uh, which was nice because I was very close with my production manager, and so if I had to go out on a run somewhere, and there was nothing else to do, I would just I had a free pass to go on to the uh, the set. So I would just go visit them, and I got to watch a lot of things happen on the show at the time. That's which really, was really nice. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah we had heard from uh, well, when we we interviewed Tim Doyle recently, he talked about how the perspective as a writer on the show was very different from the perspective of somebody working through the Henson Company, or like the way they view working on the show was different because you guys would have like these like fifteen-hour days and stuff, like where you were sweating in these costumes and just like a lot of it being like just kind of boring work waiting around and like just doing so many takes and he said his only experience with that typically was if his name was on the episode as a writer he would have to go down to the set yeah or if he was covering mm -hmm. for somebody who couldn't be there right yeah you know you have to give we have to uh, make a point of well we talked about this a little on our show but billy had some amazing dressers and, and one of them uh, greg hamlin who was never able to join us was great at giving him massages and he had this con what was the concoction he would give you to drink which would give you some life back it was yeah, like he cayenne would, pepper he and would make a, a little drink then that started with me and then i got other people to try it um and so it became it this nasty. thing we would do shots of this stuff but <laughs> it was uh apple cider vinegar uh labelia or labelia and cayenne and it would wake you up like it would get 
run through your blood. It doesn't sound like it tastes good. <laughs> it's it's a it's a shot. It's a yeah, it's, it's a, shot a thing sure. you just do, you know. And, a glass of fire. And then, uh, but it would it would just wake you up, give you energy, you know, mm -hmm. get your fire started again. Because we did. I mean, literally, I would go. You know, it's the beginning of the week. You start it probably get there at seven a.m. You know, the workshop had it worse because they started at five a.m. So. Mm -hmm. For me to even like say that this was a hard schedule for me is nothing compared to what they went through. <laughs> but you know, seven thirty, you get there, you have some breakfast, then you get into your leotard that you're going to sweat in for a while, and then we would put on our robes over that, and then we would go into the set, and we would rehearse the scene, the first scene, and the puppeteers that were doing the heads and and the production voices. Uh, would stand outside of the set looking in at us standing in there and the director would then block the scene with us we would play the scene and we would do it you know we didn't say our lines but we would do all the behavior and we would act out the scene uh, while the puppeteers were doing the lines for us so we everybody could hear it and we, everybody could see it and then once we did that we figured out what that was going to be and cameras had a sense of where they needed to be then we would go and get into our suits. And, uh, you know, sometimes you need your big feet on, sometimes you don't, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> um, and then we would come in without our heads on and we would run it for camera without our heads on. And it took, you know, it took a little while for the cameramen to get used to the fact that they, you know, the, the size of the shot, because they have to anticipate how big the head is after a while, but we couldn't keep the heads on all the time. So we would rehearse without the heads. And then they'd say, heads on, you know, and then they'd come <laughs> in and put on the heads and get us all ready. And then we would do the scene and however many times it took. And just, you usually stay in for, I don't know, probably in an hour, maybe more. Some people didn't mind staying in longer with the head on. Uh, we had fans, you know, just over time, there were different things that came into play as far as giving us breaks and figuring out when's a good time to stop mm -hmm. and when's a good time to keep going you know when's a good time to get air when's a good time to get liquid so it, it, yeah when to smoke weed <laughs> when not to smoke weed the happy, uh, dance. <laughs> the happy plant yeah <laughs> well t that dance uh <laughs> leaf and i created leaf and i lived together oh cool. we we shared a house and um he and I created that dance and, and, and we had to know, we, you know, we had to make sure it was true. So we had I mean, to find some happy plans. That, that scene physically <laughs> sold so well, like uh, Robbie and Earl falling on each other, kind of laughing at the end of that. Dance. <laughs> yeah. We referred to it. We just did an episode with it. Our friend who's comedian, Justin Schaefer was on. He referred to, it, he's like, yeah, weirdly intimate at the end of this dance. <laughs> <laughs> So knowing that you were roommates, it explains working out like that kind of dance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I just I just watched the the Andrew sisters dance that you did on Nuts to War. Oh, that was as fun. Well. I think <laughs> I cool. think Misha came up with that routine. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah, he was you know Charlene. So I think Misha, if I'm not mistaken, I think he came up with it. And yeah. Misha and Leaf were both Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I learned a Very lot cool. from those that was, guys. That was definitely one of my first. Michelangelo and Leonardo, right? Yes. Awesome. No, Donatello. Oh, Michelangelo sorry. and Donatello. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's cool. The party, the party one, and the uh, smart one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I know you, you you brought up the uh, the um, the sh the shop people. Like as far as I understand from listening to your guys' series that you did it, like. They would get there at like five and wouldn't they have to like take the suits or put the suits in like this giant like heating room or something like that because they were so wet <laughs> at the end of the day yeah in the beginning of the day they'd get there at like five o'clock in the morning they'd have to take these big rubber things off of these hooks where they had been drying at night put them on their carts make sure they had all the costumes that they needed all everything that goes each each uh dinosaur had their own cart uh, it was actually built by Greg Hamlin, who Gene had mentioned earlier. Uh, so each each dinosaur had its own cart that had everything on there for them, cup holder, you know, everything you needed. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of those carts had to be taken 
from one stage to the next, which wasn't like next door. It was quite a little run. Oh, wow. Then they had to be brought onto the stage, raised up. We had a, like a, a, a truck, you know, in the back of a truck, the lifts that they have, the metal lifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had one of those at the end of the stage because our floors, our stage was raised four feet off of the ground because the puppeteers, when we did puppet stuff, would be under the floor, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the stages were raised up. So, so everything had to be brought up onto the stage, then moved to the area of the stage where we were shooting that day or there, wherever they were designated to be. And then we'd sweat in it all day and stink and disgusting and blech. And then at the end of that day, they would have to then take it, put it back on the cart, take it back down to the studio, take it off of the cart, put it in the big drying room up on the hooks so that hopefully the next day it wasn't, you know, too wet. Um, <laughs> but, and like Gene said, you know, our hours changed constantly because of there's a union rule. It's called a 12 hour turnaround. And so that means that if you finish at, you know, nine o'clock, you can't start work until nine o'clock the next day. So wow. our, our, we would start at, for example, get there at seven 30. Right. And let's say we worked 14 hours. Cause that's usually what we did. So that's nine o'clock. Now that pushes you to nine o'clock the next morning, which then pushes you to 11 or 12 o'clock the next night. And that keeps pushing, keeps pushing. And you're trying to keep it down the hours, but we always went over. So did, by, did the, by, by, did the creature, what's that? Did, did, did that what? Did, they, uh, did the creature shop people have to adhere to that too? Because nope. they were always in even earlier, right? Yep. No, that's why they were tortured more. They, they just, oh. they didn't have that. So role. they weren't, didn't have the same projection of the union or? Not a same union. Yeah. So that, that was more for a uh, SAG after, <laughs> but so, uh, right here. I haven't seen you with your hair parted on the side of late. I went wow. over there. Uh, but, but so by Friday or, or Saturday, <laughs> we were finishing at four in the morning, you know? Yeah. So it was, that, that was crazy. a long ass day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As uh, Tim Doyle referred to you as a fucking hero was his words. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, among other, he also referred to the Henson crew as granola heads lovingly. <laughs> But yeah. he, he, he thought you guys did great work in that. He mentioned the just the long, hard days that you had to do that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. We have yeah. uh we have somebody from the creature shop coming on our podcast soon, but she quit working with Henson before dinosaurs. Who's that? So she's never uh, her name's Sherry Amit. Sure. Or now it's Sherry Tippy now. She married it into the name Sherry oh. Tippy. She did uh, she work in New York or LA or she started the creature shop. She was sent to London to oh. buy a gym to help start it and she oh, right. worked um on i have a list from my friend because this is a friend of mine who like uh i've played shows with because me and tim both play like we're in punk bands oh yeah which is which is how we met is by playing shows together oh wow. but uh yeah uh my somebody mentioned well you should message your friend jake his mom worked for henson and helped start the creature shop oh wow but yeah she worked on um she like created the pod people for dark crystal and she was one of the fireys on the labyrinth and how cool. Yeah. That's before me. Guy. Yeah. Before I, time, I, uh, obviously. I reached out to her and asked if she had met you and she said that was, is you were after her time. Yeah. Yeah. That she had, I think she said something about like, um, she worked on the Muppet show till like season three in the UK and then mm. just moved on to dark crystal. And then I think that was it for her. Right. Yeah. right. We roomed together. So I knew her long before Billy. Oh, Oh. I had no idea. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, but like, it's it's canon now. <laughs> it it seemed like it was like a like a a real, especially based on your guys's podcast. You guys became like a pretty like tight knit kind of family kind of environment, like because because oh you yeah. had like you had you in the suit. And then you had the puppeteer off working the head, so you had to work with them. And then you had the people giving you water and all that. Keeping kind of us stuff. alive. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like it was a very like family kind of feel. To it was it, which is... it because I th I think because we all worked so hard. You know, everybody was there so many hours and really strived to make it great and wanted it to succeed. Mm -hmm. And so there was no other way except to do it collaboratively. I mean, it's, it, 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 well, I couldn't do Earl on my own and Mac or Dave couldn't do Earl on his, everybody, you know, we needed each other. So 
I think that's what happened is that we all just felt really connected. The writers, the directors, I mean, we had great directors, producers, you know, everybody. At first, you know, you don't, you're, you know, you're finding your way in productions. You're not sure who's kind of doing what necessarily. And then you just, in this show, it was like everybody did everything to help each other because there was so much to do and it was so hard. But I think we all knew it was really, it was different. You know, it was a, a unique kind of show because of the perspective of the characters that how we were commenting on <laughs> humans and society and, you know, but from their perspective, it was really fun. So, and I, you know, so, except for the ahead. COVID stuff, I mean, I, we still, I still have poker nights with my dinosaur friends. We've been doing that for 30 years. You know? But it's a testament to the, to Jim Henson himself, because I think, people who work on Henson projects intentionally carry his spirit into the productions because most other productions with that kind of pressure and schedule, it, there'd be backstabbing and fights and drama. Well, we had that. And, he had some of it, probably, <laughs> but, but there was, but that always seems to be the case with Henson pro yeah, projects. You're right. There's a, yep. Yep. Yeah. There's always, it's when people come on our sets, they're kind of amazed, one by just how it technically and logistically looks and how it all works. Mm -hmm. But there's a feeling, I think, when you come on a, a Muppet set or, you know, a, a Henson set, you just kind of, there's a feeling you're just, uh, I think people get it right away. They're like, this is something, this is cool. This is something's great here. People yeah. are happy, you know? Yeah. You know what I just thought of? I never, maybe this is part of it because you know, a lot of the time the drama will come from performers and egos and there's a different, I don't, there's not the same kind of ego with you guys because you're not really the ones uh, in front of the cameras. You're still anonymous to a degree. And so there's not get me up front. I want my face seen. And there's no, th not that kind of ego and drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except for Frank. <laughs> yeah. Frank's an idiot. An <laughs> uh, no, it's probably true too. Yeah. Because and and again with puppets with the Muppets we need we need to work with each other we can't do some characters we can kind of do on our own but we mm -hmm. always have support from other puppeteers to help us do things to we all rely on each other so yeah the ego doesn't really work with the Muppets yeah you can you can kind of just shine it all through Miss Piggy at the end of the day anyway yeah we, it's all hers it's, she's she's she carries all the ego and, and pep maybe pepe has some ego going on uh i have one of our friends asked the question um oh, i can't remember which friend it is right now oh my friend katie michelle says that pepe is her favorite muppet of all time and oh. other than her just wanting to send her love she wants to know what your concept would be for pepe having his own movie what would a concept be Huh. Well, I don't know. I honestly, I haven't really thought about it. We've, we've talked about tell, oh, has Ben going by naked again? <laughs> yeah. No, he has a robe. You have a robe on. Robe. Why are you walking and crawling by? Oh, he crawled? I missed it. I missed it entirely. <laughs> I was looking up thinking. He was crawling. I thought Tim was just laughing at you not having an idea for the no, movie. No. So like, <laughs> like, chill out. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. We've talked about doing telenovelas with Pepe. That would you know? be awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty um, cool. I'd still like to do that sort of thing. <laughs> but a movie, I don't... What was the person's name? Katie. Katie, I'm sorry. I don't really have an idea. <laughs> Maybe if you do, uh, send it along or something. But I don't know. I think it would be some sort of... You know, like I would love to see him either win the lottery or... <laughs> like some big thing that he gets and then he has to just it crashes and he loses yeah. it all or something and i don't know i really i wish i could fun. come up with something good but i don't really have anything i mean if, if they should just green light season two of the muppets from 2015 and then we can uh. just have that play <laughs> out on that show uh. bill can i just say i yeah. love that show so much and i was oh, so sad I was so sad when it only had one season. Like I thought oh, that wow. show was brilliant. Like I loved it oh. so much. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, you know what? I have to uh, to be honest, I think we were get, we were heading in the right direction. And then there were some political things that happened and it kind of shifted and kind of went off tracks again. So I, I was mm -hmm. I loved the middle. 
And then there were moments I loved about everything, but I loved the middle section. I felt like we were on the right track and then things shifted a bit, but um, I, I, yeah, I, I just, uh, it was fun to do. It was fun to do. I think we'd have to re think some things, you know, mm -hmm. coming, if we did it the same thing again, I think mm -hmm. maybe not the Miss Piggy show. Cause I'm not sure that really gave us that much, you know? Yeah. Like I would, I, I would rather it have been originally the pitch was that it would have been the Muppet show, except mm -hmm. we would have done the behind the scenes and that style. Yeah. So we could, at any time we could go to the stage and do a crazy act and, a, yeah, you know, you throw a, the bits in like that. It, that'd be great. Yeah. It was just kind of a reinvention of the Muppet show, but then it got changed by different, some people changed it and stuff. So I think the piggy thing is what kind of threw me, but Still, there's some fun, great. There's some, I think, some really great puppeteering in it, you know, mm -hmm. really great visual stuff because yeah. we'd never worked with uh, documentary style shooting. Yeah, that so was that, really fun to see how that worked and, with that. <laughs> well, and it was challenging too, mm -hmm. you know, because not only were, because normally we have to think about helping the composition of a shot. We're seeing everything. So we had to let go of some of that control and trust that these great camera people were going to be able to hold that frame line and not see things that we shouldn't see. And that means we have to do another take or we screw it. You know what I mean? It was, mm -hmm. it was really tricky. And, and uh, a guy named Randall Einhorn, one of the executive producers and director who directed on the office and was one of the camera mm -hmm. guys who created that style in the American version of the office. Um, he was with us. And so okay. he really kind of made it, look great and 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 found the right people to shoot it and help us let go so that they could do their thing you know? yeah, that makes sense that he was involved because stylistically it did it did do what the office was doing very well with puppets yeah yep yeah, that was the fun that was kind of the the idea was to do that but i wanted to do it as the muppet show going on on the stage but <laughs> yeah, backstage <laughs> i wanted to get into their real lives more you know mm -hmm. off the stage and in the office but mm -hmm. kind of take them out into the real world some more. Yeah, I am. So you got to direct an episode too, which was great. Oh, I did. Okay. I did. I mean, I you know, it's so weird because I I fall into this coordinator kind of they call it a pu puppet captain. You know, he's <laughs> it's like this central collaborator guy, and I kind of deal with all the different departments. So when mm -hmm. we have new directors, I tend to be directing with them. You know, I'm kind of like helping them figure out how to do some of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in a way, I kind of direct. I, I think I directed a few of them, but I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I only kind of, you know, specifically got credit and was definitely my baby on the, uh, which one was it? The one about um, uh, Robin. Uh, oh, that was what, where, one. you know, where they lie to him or something. Yeah. And, they take yeah. him to laser tag. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> that was my episode. Yeah. And Jackson had a little cameo too. <laughs> yes, that's right. Which one was he in? Wasn't he in the one you directed? I don't know. With inventions? I don't know if he was. Maybe in the big. I don't know if that was the same episode, is it? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, he's like a kid with a science project. <laughs> uh, uh, there's like three kids. And I'm talking about Billy's son, by the way. Uh, yeah, okay. my son Jackson. Yeah, I, there's like three kids who have science projects or something. And Bobo's with. I can't remember what it was. Anyway. <laughs> the Bobo has one of my favorite jokes in the in the whole series was mm. when fozzy fozzy's dating the human and uh -huh. he talks about how when he gets out of the shower he just shakes down and uh -huh. he looks at bobo and he's just like <laughs> bobo you're a bear right like you you shake down when you come out of the shower and Bobo's just like, well, actually, I have a bachelor's degree, so I use a towel. <laughs> I thought that was the best joke. <laughs> just same same dynamic that. me and Timmy have because Timmy has a bachelor's degree and I don't. And... All right, <laughs> I don't even remember that joke. It was it killed me the first time I heard it, and then like it That's stuck funny. with me the whole time. See, the the joke I thought you were gonna bring up is uh, when Fozzie leaves the show after Kermit lies to him about his script. And they mentioned like Bobo says like I always have you know kind of special connection with them and everyone's like oh because you're both bears he's like oh yeah I guess we're also both bears okay. <laughs> yeah. if that's yeah. how you want to read it right. that's great. I like the moment where is it their 
they're at the elevator or the elevator stuck or something mm -hmm. is it somebody or somebody falls in the elevator they, I don't know, the elevator gets episode. stuck between floors right yeah and yeah. kermit's just losing it and he's just on and bobo just leans into the shot and he goes need a hug <laughs> <laughs> kermit just hugs him you know just, so sweet uh, Bobo's like it a... was. It was the episode you directed that he was oh, in. Cool. Oh, it was. Yeah, he's in the yeah. very beginning. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's to be fun to get to like have your kid come in and act on the on the show that you're making. Yeah, he was him and Peter Lynch's son uh, also, and then uh, I'm not sure who the girl was. If they hired her, if he was also maybe a crew member's daughter, I can't remember who that was. <laughs> uh, but I think we had to cut it. From the, oh, really? the actual episode. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So, um, I, oh, go on, Tim. Uh, going back to to Earl, I'm I'm really curious. Like, as far as so, when they kind of brought the kid, did they like bring the character to you, and did you kind of try and develop him? based on what they told you or kind of like your limitations within the suit like oh how how did that kind of work out was, like was... kirk thatcher designed it right kirk designed the characters yeah mm -hmm. uh the suits were built by you know people who had been building suits for many years and had mm -hmm. been working with Henson. they were built in london uh and then revised in la but um no no the 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 re one of the reasons that i Brian thought maybe I should audition was because I think he had seen me, if I remember, I like over the years, I would do like a Ralph Cramden character uh, from the honeymooners. You guys know, mm -hmm, you guys mm -hmm. know Ralph Cramden, yeah. Jackie yeah. Gleason. Yep. And, and so that's kind of what I read it to be. Cause they, you know, they send you what they call sides, right. Which is a couple scenes from their script that you're going to use to audition with. And to me, it just read like Jackie Gleason from the honeymooners. Mm -hmm. And so, I just, that was the behavior. I just, I just tried to be Jackie Gleason. Like he would do things, you know, his, his gestures are very much <laughs> Ralph Cramden, you know, and uh, just, just some of the stuff he would do, like, fr you know, fr like she would walk out of the room and Earl's just, you know, <laughs> shake, shaking the head. And, mm -hmm. um, so it, it was really that kind of stuff. It was just about, I was really, in my mind, I was just doing Jackie Gleason. Yeah. I mean, I was watching recently, um, I have the DVDs, so I watch the d behind the scene footage where Kirk talks talks about designing mm. Earl and a reason they had to like soften his affectation and like because he had like the whole like holding a cigar in his mouth and looking just kind of fierce at first. <laughs> yeah. And they wanted to be more like an everyman, so they like switch his Hawaiian shirt to like a you know, a flannel and <laughs> Yeah. Well there you I don't know if you can see him. There he is. Yep. That's the original sculpt that's amazing i just uh, i just have uh, not the original I, but i mean it's it's a oh yeah there it's a couple <laughs> small guy <laughs> this is originally it was that size yeah, yeah. Then they, but this is the one small. with the hard jaw <laughs> this one has the original model which is the hard jaw and then they yeah. softened him and, and made earl softer but um yeah he had a cigar and he drank beer you know and we kind of <laughs> that was took taken away in the beginning because i think everybody was on top of it and trying to figure out what's appropriate and then as they <laughs> let us go as it got successful they let us go then we started to bring the cigar in and mm -hmm. you know it loosened up a bit which was good you know once they felt excuse me once they felt comfortable with the character he wasn't too hard and mm -hmm. they, they they let off a little bit and, and let us play some more how much did um did when they brought in Stuart, how much did that kind of influence it too? Or did he kind of work towards you more? I I think at first he had to work more towards um, what Dave Goals was, you know, creating on the track and what we were doing. And then because, you know, as things change with edits, right, you don't know how it's ultimately going to be edited. So they have to kind of figure out how to make things work for the character too. When you're, when you're doing the voice, you're watching this thing and you're thinking about the storyline and how this is all playing out in a scene. And sometimes you have to change the intention because it's just, it's not working or there's a note mm -hmm. that's come down. They said, you know what? He's too angry here. Can we soften that up? Mm -hmm. So Stuart had to try and find and make it work 
And that I think took a little time, but we would then watch the episodes and go, oh, that's interesting. He's doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's think about what he's doing a little bit when we go on the next episode, you know? And so then we, eventually the three of us kind of found the balance, you know? But at first it was separate because it just is, you don't know each other, you don't have real communication. Mm -hmm. And then Stuart would come visit the set and we could talk. And so over time, I'd say after the first season, I feel like we were really became in sync and we were following each other in a way, you know, it was yeah. just, we all knew who he was supposed to be by the second season. Yeah. It makes, go ahead, Ben. I was going to say, it makes sense because the show picks up and gets better. Everyone gets better at what they're doing as it goes. Like when it we does. first started the podcast with the concept being that I'm just getting, I only watch the episode before we record it. I don't watch ahead. Mm. So, I mean, I, right. I've mentioned this so you before. Can see I, it. I still, I already have a dinosaur's tattoo since we started the podcast. But, <laughs> but I was, I was new to the concept. Now I, I have a tattoo. I have like, I have this like pillowcase with like, All right. everyone on it. What's the tattoo? Ben, uh, it's a frying pan that says "Not the Mama" uh, on it. <laughs> ben went cool. all in for some reason. Like, I, yeah, it's well, great. I was like, you right, don't right, even know if you green. really, you don't even know if you really like the show. That just but... happened on its own. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah, you know, it, it could turn on me at any point. I could get to, like, the next episode and just suddenly it's racist, but so far it's... <laughs> well, no, you know, and uh, what was I going to say? The, um, oh, man, just flew out of my head. Uh, oh, uh, changing, uh, you know, getting better over time. Mm -hmm. I, in the very, very beginning, because I hadn't done suit work, was, I think my gestures were very big and kind of too high a lot of the times for his body. And, you know, I was overdoing it and it took me, I think it took me a couple seasons to really start to simplify it enough. Um, and I got, I told, I told the story before, but Frank Oz had come to visit the set and this was like towards the end, I think of the first season. And he said, you know, occasionally you should have Earl touch his face or scratch his cheek or rub his chin, you know, reach up because it was up here, right? Like reach mm -hmm. up and touch you know, like people do. This is what we do. We touch our faces, we mm -hmm. do this, because then it, it helps connect the head to the body. And I think it was absolutely right until that time, this bottom part was doing a lot, you know, and the head was doing stuff, but they yeah. didn't feel didn't connected. Didn't interfere with each other as much. <laughs> yeah, so, so it became more as one over time. And I, and I don't know, I mean, I think Robbie and Charlene, I think they were great from the get-go. Like I think because Leaf and Misha had already oh, been working yeah. this kind of stuff. And they were knew already how, turtles. Yeah, they knew what was too big and too small. You know, they had a real... So I watched them. I tried to learn from them. Uh, but for me personally, I, I think I, I think it got better over time. And, uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember in the, the, one of the... One of the interviews you guys did, someone was talking about how uh, whoever was puppeteering Charlene was like going too fast for Sally Struthers and she was just like, Can you can you slow down? Cause I can't oh, yeah. talk that fast. I Bruce, thought that was great. <laughs> Bruce Lenoyal. I mean you know, Bruce Lenoyal is just a ball of energy just to begin with. <laughs> As a puppeteer and a performer, he has so much energy and and just like so fast and so clever. And and so yeah, I think it was they were they were on Bruce time, you know. And, <laughs> so I think Sally kind of was like, okay, I just, I can't get all the words in. I don't know how he's doing this. <laughs> it Sorry. works with a, it works with a lot of Muppets characters. Cause there is a lot of the fast pace, like, uh, you know, Tim Doyle mentioned it sometimes when writing the jokes for the show, since he had Henson involved, Henson company, a lot of the way Muppets tell jokes is they do a quick little joke and then they all go, ha 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 afterwards. <laughs> well, that's a compliment. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah. Tim. laughs> <laughs> and he, he just kind of said that sometimes it's more simple delivery and gesticulation. Yeah, and I could I could see somebody moving Charlene too fast. I mean, Silas Charlotte does have a slower delivery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was just about them finding their timing together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just like we all did. I think everybody had to find the tempo of that character. It's hard when you've got four, three, or four people doing it. You know, <laughs> it's got to take some time to get to get it to feel right. Um, I, I was just watching uh, yesterday. I watched the interview you did with uh, Stuart Pankin on your on your show on the Breda Brothers. Mm, yeah, and um, I, I noticed you had mentioned being like a passive fan of Stuart Pankin before he came onto the show, and I I bet that had to like help with how Earl came together. As you already liked what he did when you saw him on screen 
in different shows. So Oh yeah, I was a big I uh, yeah, I mean I was excited to hear that he was going to be, you know, the voice. And and at that time, you know, I even though I knew that, you know, with Henson and with the Muppets usually, you know, especially more with the Muppets, the performer is the voice as well. You know, like Kevin mm -hmm. Clash was the baby's voice and yeah. the performer of the character. Mm -hmm. But this was a choice where they were going to have other people do the voices. But and 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 I, it's funny. Like I still, if I think about Earl, I still hear Mac a lot in my head because we spent <laughs> the, the most time doing it. Yeah. So I hear Mac's version, but then I also hear Stewart too because I I love the quality of his voice and where that eventually you know where we all came together and got to. But as for like for the other characters, oh, and to answer your question, yes, I was thrilled that Stuart Pankin <laughs> was going to be doing this thing. You know, I didn't know what he was going to do because he did something different than I had ever heard him do before. I never heard him do this type of thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. he also Stewart's... kind of Jackie Gleason with it a bit. <laughs> yeah, he added there was a there was a bigger kind of deeper. I don't know what it was. It was this rounded kind of sound that he did. What <laughs> like he talks about it. This he he based his on some comedian that he remembered. You know, from years ago. <laughs> so I had never heard him do a voice like that. I just knew Stuart Pankin was great, you know, mm -hmm. and so I was excited about that. <laughs> and then getting people like Jessica Walters, you know, and oh, yeah. and all of the cameos of voices that we have, but um, Sherman Hemsley. Oh my God, Sherman Hemsley. And then, so, so my, my, what I was going to you know, <laughs> say was, you know, in my head, when I think about these characters, I hear Alan Troutman as Fran. <laughs> like my first thing isn't to hear Jessica. I, I hear... Bruce as Charlene, I hear Steve Whitmire as Robbie, I hear Steve as as Richfield. You know, yeah, these are sense. the voices I hear because I heard them. They were in my head all the time. When we did scenes, we had our hear headphones, our microphones. And so that was in my head for years. And so when I see the show, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised because I, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of new in a way. Yeah, it's even surreal. though yeah, even though I was there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gene, when, when you, when you would visit set, was there anything that you ever saw that just kind of like blew your mind? Like, you're just like, how are they pulling this off right now or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, yeah, and I, I, I've talked about, this was the scariest moment for me because Billy had to do a scene when Earl gets swallowed by a dinosaur <laughs> the swamp monster. and he decided to roll <laughs> oh. down the throat of the dinosaur. And so I was really scared that he was going to break his neck or something because of the weight of the uniform. And mm -hmm. he pulled it off, and we were all amazed. But that that was a little nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, if you we uh, when we did that episode, we were wondering that too. We're like, how the hell did they just roll like that in those suits? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. If you were to ever listen to our podcast, it comes up a lot, especially with Earl. Just specifically, we're just like, like falling down for one thing, getting back up is another thing. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> So, sorry for the language but it's okay it wasn't easy yeah it, i don't know just... i just i just figured go for it you know i, I yeah. know the work i know the workshop hated it when i would do stuff like that because i i could crush the servos in the head <laughs> yeah you know? so that wasn't a good thing or tear it i mean they worked hard to keep these suits together but i figured you gotta go you for it do, you didn't do the role spontaneously did you they they you worked it out or planned yeah, it, but there was right? no way how was i going to protect i I mean, I, there was no right. guarantee that I mm -hmm. could, you know, protect the head from breaking. Right. No, I was just curious because they, because you're just mentioning how they didn't like you doing that stuff. So I didn't know whether you snuck it in or no, no. And it's the same, you know, same with Muppets. They prefer you not doing certain things with the puppets because you don't want to ruin them and break. But I just, I would just go for it. I was new and then I, <laughs> Did you ever? nothing broke. Never. Okay, good. I don't, not that I remember. I mean, sometimes my head would, the servos would uh, smoke and we'd have, I'd have to hold Oof. my breath and get them to take the head off because those chemicals were in there. Oh, my God. Um, so, you know, there was that kind of stuff. But <laughs> nothing ever. I don't – I could be wrong. Maybe somebody remembers. I could have broken and ripped, I'm sure. <laughs> was there something I – I might be thinking of a, a different production, but was there something you guys would do if you knew you didn't like your own take so you'd screw it up intentionally so they'd have to redo it? Or was that a different production? Uh – I like that concept. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. Well, I know with Muppets, sometimes if it's not going well, we just do bad lip sync or we stop talking and, <laughs> you know, the, 
<laughs> it's just we just we try and find our way out of it you know <laughs> but i thought i remember you doing some kind of just you know your gestures would just go crazy or, <laughs> or you do something intentionally bad just to can't remember get another i can't remember usually we would do it in character if it was bad you know <laughs> if earl screwed up then he would just just say it you know you'd just be like ah it's open his mouth <laughs> or, or leave <laughs> you know? just leave when uh yeah. oh there's another thing um so like when the characters would ingest something like would you so you would like open up the mouth or would the puppeteer <laughs> open it up and then would someone you would just put this like puppet or like a like food you like put it down your throat or anything like that or is it just like well i'm trying to think of any time earl actually ate something i mean the only things that we would do is pretend we would eat or bite or mm -hmm. drink but i don't think earl ever swallowed or tried to swallow anything in his mouth not that i can remember was, would there have been room no. or was it closed off because of the yeah, it could, right it wouldn't it couldn't go anywhere. anywhere it could sit inside the yeah. jaw he'd have to keep his mouth closed mm -hmm. you know but uh, with Earl and Robbie and Ch all of us had relatively shallow mouths, you know, there wasn't like a, it's not like if you know the car, the character, big mean Carl, do you guys mm -hmm. know that? Yeah. Muppet character? yeah. I mean, he has a, he has a, um, a sleeve inside of his mouth that goes down and out of the bottom of the puppet. So you can drop <laughs> things in and people underneath <laughs> pull it out. Uh, but they weren't that the dinosaurs weren't like that. I think what, I, oh. I was thinking, are you thinking the same scene? I was thinking... What are you talking about, Baby? Well, not... Well, Baby did eat stuff, but there is that one scene... Oh, yeah, where, the Baby did do it. Because he's a puppet. That was easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Roy has this part where there is... He's eating with his mouth open, and there's a <laughs> there's a hand puppet inside of him, like, inside his mouth. And oh. That, that looked, like, really... Oh, like, yeah, because the puppet was also... Was what he was eating was also grossed out by the way he ate yeah yeah so he's like talking so someone's puppeteering it while it's yeah. in his mouth <laughs> that must have been a special kind of thing they must have used like you know head number two yeah to kind of revise it and get in there and make that happen i i forgot about that but yeah i mean if there was a puppet in his mouth it wasn't like a cg effect or something it was done practically and and they they cut him open or figured out a way of doing that you know. Yeah. So yeah. so it must have been like so I assume it was like so someone like wrote the script or whatever and worked out all the scenes and it was just like, Oh, in this scene Earl's gonna do this, so we need something special. Like mm. that must have been kind of you think that was and like frustrating for the shop people. They were just like, Oh, we need oh. this we need this. Part oh yeah. For, for I don't know one, how they did it. For one gag. Like it's just yeah. one gag. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know how they did it every week. I mean it was literally weekly. New characters, new costumes, mm -hmm. you know, new effects. Dead new, new gags. Like Robbie's hair growing at one point or his spikes growing and having to get him cut, they had to change that around. Charlie's yeah. tail had to change. A couple yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think maybe, you know, at first uh, there was kind of a, probably a bit of a head start, you know, as far as what was coming. But then scripts still changed mm -hmm. over time. So they had some leeway, but it was about probably a week to get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, they probably knew the week before, but it was a week to kind of forget it all, which is <laughs> not a lot of time. No. Yeah. Not a lot of time. Not yeah, when you're yeah. working as well. You know, there's people you're working on set and you're having like for uh, for example Jane Gutnick and Pete Brook who kind of ran the puppet side of dinosaurs. They not only worked on the set, they had to also then work in the shop and there were other people too that helped but mainly they had the bulk of all that stuff going on mm -hmm. and I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they got it done. Yeah, and plus there's also scenes too like uh you mentioned how baby was like a puppet puppet but there's also scenes where he's like walking around like he's walking on like all fours and stuff like that uh, yeah. and mm -hmm. like it's very on the ceiling yeah he's on the <laughs> ceiling like was yeah. that was that all like did they have to make like an automated like version of baby or was it less like no if, if you see the baby crawling you're probably not seeing the floor mm -hmm. right that that so the sense. frame the frame line is just where his knees or his hands would be hitting the floor. So you can see his hands come up and you can see it, but you're not actually yeah. seeing the contact. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So he's moving along a trench, basically. You've got the set, which is raised off of the ground. And then imagine there's an, an opening, maybe four to eight feet, right, between rocks and plants on each side. So there's this kind of little valley in between or, or you know, opening. That's what the puppet moves between and the puppeteers are below him. So it looks like he's going through. Was that on Terry, the ceiling, I don't Harden remember the John shot, Kennedy, but either usually? we shot it so it so that the the camera is above and the ceiling piece is on the floor. Yeah. Uh, right? Sense. Yeah. Or, or it was done maybe, maybe with an effect where they did it on green screen, but I, I don't know the shot. But mm -hmm. I would imagine we did it where maybe the, the ceiling was on the floor and the puppeteer's through there and the camera's up above it. So it looks like he's on the ceiling, you know? Yeah. It's, it's really interesting to see, like, because they did a lot of different things with that puppet spe specifically. Mm. Like, it was very interesting. Yeah, to yeah, to see. really clever stuff, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, you know, was a part of how to, how do you make that illusion, create that illusion, you mm -hmm. know, of him walk. Looks like he's walk. Looks like he's crawling. You know, looks like he's on the ground. Looks like he's flying through the air. <laughs> yeah, it's seen in the in the making of that a I lot know, of like... Kevin's personality went into how Baby acted to begin with. Yeah, because he, <laughs> he was into messing with people and playing pranks and oh, <laughs> being yeah, annoying. He's... He's amazing. He's amazing. He, uh, yeah, he's just such a fun guy to be around. We just always laugh, you know, he's mm -hmm. never takes it too seriously, you know, um, but works really hard. All, all the people that worked with, on the baby, uh, I mean, I have to give credit to everybody how, how that character came together too. you know, this idea of crawling across the floor. It's not just Kevin, right? It's mm -hmm. other people making that work in sync with each other, you know, and it's all again, collaborative. Terry, Terry did the hands, and then, uh, and then I think when she left, then it was Julianne, and John always did the eyes, you know. And then probably depending on the legs, you need other people then to help too. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you did you ever do any voice work for dinosaurs? Any I did. side characters? I did. I believe you I know, like, Alan did. I think Alan Trotman was like Maurice or whatever who dates Charlene in an episode. <laughs> oh, he did lots of stuff. Alan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alan is Monster Under the Bed. Alan is uh, 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 the 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 teacher. Um, okay. Oh yeah, Mr. Pullman. Uh, I think uh, Pullman sounds right. I wrote he, it down at some point. <laughs> he Alan did tons of voices. Same with Bruce. Same with Misha. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm trying to remember. I think I did. We're well, gonna need another Timmy. I think I did oh, that you? scientist. Was yeah, that I you? Scientist guy. <laughs> I didn't do the puppet, but I did the voice. Um, That's awesome. Uh, I did some of the the um, announcers on the TV. Uh, occasionally, I would do some of that. I think I did. Sure, truly the best part of the show. On the TV. Yeah, it's yeah. one of my favorite gags. Yeah. <laughs> there was a scene. I think that when Earl and Roy bury Ethel, <laughs> yeah, oh, we just they, there's a puppet version of it. There's the, the where they show like the, <laughs> the idiots, reenactment on TV. Yeah. I think I was Earl for that. They call they call Roy Ray in the scene, and he gets upset about it. Even though they call <laughs> yeah. him an idiot as well, he's only upset about the name. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. did that one, so it's like fresh in our minds. Yeah, <laughs> and I and I was a um, I was a caveman. I, I remember the, that you were talking the about the werewolf. That. The werewolf uh, episode. Kirk was the wereman. He was he was Robbie <laughs> turned into a werewolf, but I was the caveman. I think earlier in the episode. That's great. Oh, I mean either. <laughs> and then actually, uh, I think also in a in a clips episode, or what do they call it? Not clips. What do you call it? The the clip show. The clip show. The clip show. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I play a. Uh, there's like a guy. It's me. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I have a, a Earl's it's... shirt on, and I have a little mustache. I think. <laughs> I don't know. It's like some I think commercial. This might be or something. this the second clip show, which I think was based on like a. Oh what, maybe. What was it? It was like I, I haven't seen it yet, so Timmy would know better than I, but. I know the first one was the one with the paleontologist going around right. discovering fossils. Right. And the second one was like um, a TV show gag thing, but I don't remember exactly hey, it what was, I read. I think it was like a commercial or something that, that I did yeah. in that clip show or something. Yeah. The, yeah, but different voices. 
I, I love that you were the voice of uh, Mr. Lizard because that's like my name. My name on the show is we're going to need another <laughs> Timmy. And like it's because uh, that was always a that was a thing around my house that my my dad oh, would really? say and stuff like that. Oh, he right. would say that yeah. and be like, we're going to need another Timmy. <laughs> his, his dad didn't like him. So he wanted a different one. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Was he always that... says it was lovingly, but I don't think so. <laughs> Did you just, just, just like, was that just a, like a voice you had in your head or you were just like, or uh, was it... it was based on Mr. Wizard. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, so I, I, that. I think you kind of talked like that. You know, it was that kind of, <laughs> don't need another Timmy. You know, it was it. Was Kirk, it was Kirk was that. Timmy, right? Uh, yeah, he did the voice. I think. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think, and I don't know why they didn't use Alan. I think Alan did the puppet for Mr. Lizard, and I think mm -hmm. Steve did Timmy. And I don't know why they changed the voices, but uh, I'm sure Alan's would have been great. Mr. Does, that, does that happen to you in other, like, puppet productions? Are you usually the voice of your puppet? Or does it get changed around a lot? I very rarely do, uh, do does somebody else do the voices for Muppets. Mm -hmm. I think with, with Dinosaurs, it was different, I think, because... It just, it was the nature of what they decided to do with all of it. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what's so frustrating. A lot of people don't make that distinction and they're always saying, well, hey, you do the voice of Pepe. And they <laughs> completely cancel out the, the whole performance in puppet. <laughs> yeah, you are I think Pepe. it's just a voice job for these characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But no, with Muppets, any, any puppet I do, I can't think of a situation where it wasn't the, my voice. We just, we do the whole character. Our uh, our friend Sarah Shockey from the podcast Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling, uh, she wanted to ask about specifically when you're playing Ralph the dog and playing piano, hmm. <laughs> how puppeteering that worked. Uh, well, it's another person <laughs> who does the hands. Yep. Same way that Jim did. Uh, I don't know who. Well, originally playing the piano, I don't know who first did it with Jim, but I know that. It, Eventually, it became Steve who did the hands for Ralph when he played the piano on the Muppet Show, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the years later, I would always ask if he would do it with me. You know, when I started doing it, so Steve would do it with me. <laughs> uh, and then, just depending on you know what we're doing and what we're shooting, who's in the scene, and sometimes it's other people. But I usually try and find someone that who at least can fake it really well. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, Peter's done it with me, Peter. So Steve, Steve used to do most of that because Steve would help me do Rolf or he would help me do the Swedish Chef or Dr. Mm -hmm. Teeth. Um, now it's either Peter uh, who tends to help me with the Swedish Chef and then um, Tim Lagasse. <laughs> Tim, Lagasse Tim Lagasse does the hands, has been doing the hands for me with Dr. Teeth mm -hmm. and Rolf. When we were in... The O2, and we when we did the the Hollywood Bowl, Tim and I did Rolf together and Doctor Teeth. Sorry, Gene. That's, cool. That's awesome. Well, I thought you were saying something. I was just making a dumb joke. Oh, what is it? <laughs> we would like to hear. I it. just made up a fake name for the guy doing that. <laughs> I so after um, dinosaurs ended, Bill. Uh, you obviously kind of stuck around. Um, he was suicidal. Oh god, <laughs> is that why? Is that why Earl would make suicide jokes all the time? Yeah, <laughs> Earl did have a habit of saying he was going to go out to the garage and hang himself. He, he does it all the time. Yeah. yeah, I don't even remember that. We I have to it. watch these shows. Again. <laughs> he wasn't. Um, you got busy right away, right? You see, you were on dinosaurs, up at Treasure Island, and the. Well, and that was a few years later, yeah. but. That was my favorite one when oh, I was a little kid. Animal show. <laughs> yeah, well, the after dinosaurs, I think the first thing I did was a Kokomo oh, video or mess? something. Oh, I remember I did, that vividly. I as did a background child. characters and assisted, and then we did Muppet Classic Theater, which was really like my first character. I did one of the, I did the lead Elvis Elf, uh, <laughs> and then after that was then the. Brian asked me if I would wanted to do the animal show, and that was kind of a big training ground for me as far as puppets and character, you know, and figuring mm -hmm. out how to do both at the same time. Uh, and then after the after the first animal show was then Muppet Treasure Island, which was my first movie character. Uh, so what, like, yeah. Which character were you in Treasure Island? Clueless Morgan. Oh, cool. The goat. Awesome. Yeah. 
it's it's been a while since I've seen that one, but that was one that I had like recorded it off TV on a VHS or something, and me and my sister watched it all the time when we were little. Oh yeah, <laughs> well they, he was like my main character in the film, but I you know, mm-hmm. and then there were other other characters, uh, Angel Marie, the big green monster, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and d- different ones. But yeah, Clueless was my my main guy. He was he was the the, the smart one. <laughs> I gotta I gotta watch the background uh, characters too. Did you really? I did a warthog and a rat. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was gonna ask how often you get involved with the set. I mean, since you, I auditioned for Fran. Really? Did you really? Halfway through the series, they um, well after uh, the first season. The first season, they had. Um, I'm sorry. What was his name? Uh, to, who did the first season? Was uh, it Alan or not Fran? No, no, no. Talking about the in, in the suit, Mitchell. Yeah. His name was mm. Mitchell. The first yeah, season. Yeah, he left, and so they were auditioning for Franz, and I it was Billy's had his most embarrassing audition. That was one of the more embarrassing moments for me because <laughs> I was a little too confident. I just didn't realize how difficult it was, and I. <laughs> was just lost and embarrassed during that audition. <laughs> oh man. It was horrible. Did you did you just were you in the suit like in front of people or no. were you just No, you had to kind of mime it like you were in the suit and then improvise a little bit. And I just wasn't prepared for it. I I can't imagine what that audition would entail, especially without a suit to pretend that how you would act with one on. That I can see how that there's embarrassment baked into that. <laughs> well, when I auditioned, I actually thought because I didn't know what they looked like, the character. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what mm-hmm. Earl looked like, and in my mind, it was a Tyrannosaurus Rex type of character. Mm-hmm. And so I shaved my head because I wanted to have that look of a dinosaur. You know, like I wanted to be streamlined head, and mm-hmm. but then at the same time, I was thinking Jackie Gleason. So it was that kind of. You know, my hands were like here a lot and doing a lot of the st- Gleason stuff. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was going to somehow help to shave my head. I, I, I hope, I guess it did. I did, I did learn that uh, the way they decided between me and another uh, great actor and performer, Jack Tate, who went on to become the Jack of Jack in the Box. Uh, he um, he was a great guy, and he was on the show. He, he did was, a lot of uh, He was sexual Harris, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gus, sexual Harris. Okay. A lot of characters. He was great. The devil. He was Gus as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, wait, no, he wasn't the devil. <clears throat> he did. A, he did a bunch of stuff. Job um, wizard, maybe. I, that that uh, we kind of follow around a lot, like which costumes are used for like eighty different characters. Like, yeah, Sid Turtle Puss gets reused, like. Those Probably are the most dinosaurs. I've heard us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so those are the same performers. So those guys were doing all different characters as well. You know, they were rating different attitudes again, different behavior for all di- different characters. Depending on when Jason Alexander would be the voice of the one puppet sometimes. And well, we never knew who was going to do those until at right. They would do those. They would decide those voices after That's... everything was shot. Wow. So we didn't we know. We talked who about those characters a lot, and we recently did that whole dinosaurs month mm-hmm. on our show. Yeah, and the fourth episode was a lot of those um, unisaurs. Unisaurs, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Jack Tate. Um, what was I saying about Jack? He was going to oh. be Earl originally. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, as well. One of the ways they decided was they turned the sound down and watched the auditions, and so it was totally based on, again, the, I keep going back to it, but the behavior. <laughs> yeah. So it was based on my movements, my attitude, I guess. Um, but he was also uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Jack did. Um, who was the Barney based character? Georgie. 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 He was Georgie. Yeah. Georgie, he was Georgie. the hippo, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hippo. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the last. Technically, I'm not. One of the I'm last, not there yet. <laughs> it's like oh, is one it? of the last episodes, I think, in the oh, right. Disney yeah. Plus, the way they released it. I think oh, they yeah. reorganized this yeah. episode. Something. I think Georgie must die is like one of the final episodes. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I think they didn't they do. I heard they put the uh, the final episode like seventh or something. It's right? yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> the other thing they did is they made season one go thirteen episodes long, and they ended it with the clip show, which wasn't even supposed to be up yet. It was like supposed to be eight, 
So there's clips in that clip show that haven't happened yet if you're <laughs> watching it for the first time in Disney+. Oh, my Plus. gosh. I don't, I don't know why they, like, so now, like, when we introduce our episodes, I'll mention, like, this is, like, season two, episode 18. I don't know what it is on Disney+, Plus, but you can probably find it. <laughs> right. Because wow, they moved it all wild. around. I didn't know it was that mixed up. I just thought they didn't do the uh, final episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's weird because originally when it was when it first went up, I, like, intentionally went to the last season. I'm like, okay, let's see. Because I also wanted to see what episodes they might have removed yeah. because yeah. some of the episodes were, like, removed from syndication for, mm. for content or whatever. So I was yeah. wondering what Disney mm -hmm. Plus would do. And it's all there, but it's in such a weird order that I, don't I, know I why. At, at first mm -hmm. I thought – why isn't the season why is the series like finale not in the lineup and it was it's just buried in the final yeah. season it's very weird i don't know why i mean i think the, i think the way that it aired on network tv too i think the finale was the last one like on prime time i think tim mentioned and then they burned off a few episodes over the summer or something oh like, really like oh, charlene's flat world or a, few, uh, a couple other ones but imagine watching a show where it's like all right well these guys all died and then next week you're like <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. I know. They're back at it. <laughs> we oops, we made a mistake. They they're yeah, not dead. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Well, same thing with I noticed that when I watched just the first three episodes of the Muppet Show now on Disney Plus. Um you see Scooter in like episode two in their order, and then in episode three you're introducing in Scooter's getting the job and being introduced to oh them. really yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i noticed that that's that's very weird yeah i don't know who decides that stuff i, I should know. ask i guess i could ask i'm gonna apply for that job <laughs> and just fix it let me uh let me make a call, make a phone call. <laughs> hello mr mouse is that you <laughs> get me scheduling <laughs> uh, so you you were talking about some of the work you did afterwards uh ben ben brought up something about uh gene you actually did the the storyboarding for muppets in space is that correct or did some work as yeah. a storyboard artist yeah yeah muppets i was from space. i was one of the two storyboard artists that's yeah. awesome that's awesome yeah was we it got to have some fun in north carolina <laughs> i was gonna say how was that like actually like working together i'm sure that was probably a lot of fun we didn't work you know it wasn't side by side mm. we just uh, they'd talk to us a little bit about what the scenes were and we would just go off on our own and do them but we still got to live together for a couple of weeks and um we were on the set around. you know yeah. on the stages and i could go visit him in the offices where he was working with the other guy and uh lunch I wasn't there for the full production i was only there for two or three weeks and one of those weeks was the first week of shooting mm -hmm. so i saw a few things being shot i had to go home because I was doing some animation for Sesame Street, and I had to get home to to get started on that. So, but it worked out anyway. The storyboards were finished. I think Daryl, Daryl, um, Darren, uh, he stayed on for a bit longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how closely they adhered to them anyway. <laughs> I would see them on a board on the set, and oh and well. I, I mean, it helped that director because he was new to it. Mm -hmm. right. But we had to kind of improvise a bit because he wasn't used to it. That was the dis the biggest disappoint. Well, not biggest. I'm exaggerating, but um, <laughs> Billy happened to be in our area when it was released, and we went to the theater to see it together for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting, you know, anxiously to see my name up on the screen for the first time. And for maybe it's because we weren't union, but the storyboard artists were not included in the end wow. credits. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's sad. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that sucks. No idea. I had no idea that they were doing that. I don't, I don't know why. I guess union. I don't know. I don't know if there's a storyboard union. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, is did you do any storyboard board work for anything else before that, or is that just for the Sesame Street stuff? Yeah. But uh, that was the only production I've done that for. Um, I did some character design stuff. Um, but not storyboarding. Yeah, I, I mean, I went through your gallery on your website, and, and you're a great illustrator. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, mm -hmm. crazy! Can you believe how talented I am? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. The first thing I had seen was uh, that you were nominated for uh, NAACP award, and I got confused really quick before I went and saw your recent work with uh, 
was it Frank Morrison? Is that the author, the illustrator? He's the illustrator. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I'm gonna know on let's see March. Tw I don't know when when's this gonna air, guys. Uh, th yeah. three weeks from now, I believe. Maybe. Okay, so I'll know by then. March 22nd <laughs> is when they announce the winner of the NAACP Image Award for my my book, The Secret Garden of George Washington Carver. So fingers awesome. crossed. You'll win. He's one. What? How many have you? I'm up against. I'm up against LeBron James among <laughs> the other three nominees. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Your book's better. Does he have a history of winning things? I think you'll be fine. I don't... Yes, he does. <laughs> He's award-winning. Cincinnati, man. You know, we should, Cincinnati. We should mention if we can if we can plug we since this is three weeks from now. By mm -hmm. the time this airs. Um, you know we're on we're on currently on hiatus, but we're going to put uh, a podcast out of our shows that we've done already. So mm -hmm. by that time, you can go to iTunes and look for the Beretta Brothers uh, podcast if awesome. you just want to be listening instead of watching. Yeah, okay, cool. Because I watch yeah I watch all those on YouTube, and it, like mm -hmm. at my job it's kind of hard because <laughs> I have to like move a lot, so I have like my my. <laughs> I have like my phone perched up and I have like a wireless headphones and I'm like moving and I'm like, damn, I wish this was podcast form. It'd be so much easier. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that'll be, yeah, that should be up in about, well, by the time it's, it's already up by the time everyone's hearing this. So go check yeah, it out. It'll be, is that a candle it. behind you? It is. And, and Ben has the same brand candle up on his thing, right? <laughs> oh, What's I the... couldn't tell. Like I kept seeing this little thing through your chair. I have, uh, what, what do you, I got. It's Mainstays is the brand I have. Oh, you What's guys both have it? Main, Mainstays. Uh, oh, have shout out to Mainstays. The big pumpkin spice. A velvet, velvet Sunset is a uh, my aroma. What does Velvet Sunset yeah. smell yeah, like? Yeah, the same brand. <laughs> it smells like a Velvet Sunset. Like what? you've never smelled a Velvet Sunset before. I put the candle on. I just did a four-hour <laughs> meditation seminar before we did this, so I had the candles going and all the atmosphere I needed. Nice. I you have can't a, find a candle. I've obtained a lot of candles since I live in New Orleans, and we have a, a lot of like hurricane scares or like big storms, and <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a, like a new wave candle. <laughs> a hipster, a hipster candle. Yeah. <laughs> what's you guys playing? Tell me what's the name of your punk band? Uh, we are in. Well, okay, so Ben is a auxiliary member of my band. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ben has played... I play, I play trombone whenever I'm nearby. Yeah. Okay. Because we don't live anywhere near each other. Um, gotcha. But Ben will come down sometimes when we play a big festival here in Florida, and Ben will come and play trombone. Uh, I play drums, and the band is called Gutless. What is it? It's a good name. Gutless. Gutless. Cutlass, okay. Cutlass, and uh, it's funny Cutlass. that I looked up Cutlass. online. Yeah, it's on, it's on like Spotify and I, I assume Apple Music too. Yeah, we're Cutlass. Did you say Gutless or Cutlass? Cut Cutlass. Cutlass. <laughs> like with, with okay. a, Chicken with Cutlass. A, without a tummy. No guts. <laughs> uh, yeah, no it's, glory. Funny, it's funny you, uh, you, you bring that up because the, I think one of the first things when Ben uh, found your podcast or whatever, he was uh, Ben was just like, oh, their theme song, it's ska, like it's really cool, and I was like, that's my old band. Oh, oh, okay. That, yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, you yeah, played, you played my, in a ska I, band? <laughs> no, it wasn't a ska band, but it was. That was one of our songs. We're I'm playing bass and guitar on that. And... Oh, it's a straight up. It's a ska song at least, because that that <laughs> rhythm is unmistakable. It's a great song. <laughs> it's called today. We uh... actually th let's see. I think well on our on our YouTube page there's. There are videos other than episodes, and there's a video that has the whole song on it, if you want to listen to it. Yeah, I do. What was your band called? It was called Babylon Sound. Babylon the Sound? The song is called Today. Um, <laughs> we uh, just looped it for the beginning. Yeah, I, I, found, I found my tooth. Because we... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> says my tooth. Is that... From what? From my mouth. From mouth, yeah. I mean, from what? What do you mean? Just why do you? Have, why is it gold? It, it had a gold filling and a cap on it. It's my doctor tooth tooth. Why is yeah. it not in your mouth? Because it was. I had to have it pulled. It was a problem. So they pulled it out, and I kept is that it. is that recent? Or is this, uh, it's about three old years tooth. old now. Oh maybe. yeah. Oh. Look, I don't know why I'm showing you. I just, <laughs> Everybody I just saw it and I thought, <laughs> here's my tooth. scar on my hand from some <laughs> carcinoma I had removed. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, we. Um, it's funny because uh, Ben Ben used to be in a ska band. Uh, yeah. We have like 
a gutless has a ska song it's not recorded yet we don't have like a full version of it but uh, uh mm -hmm. so sometimes we'll have guests on here and we'll just it will it will turn into an entire conversation about ska music <laughs> <All right. laughs> I don't know. it's just a thing uh it's like our proc it's like our people yeah. probably think that's like all we like as far as right, right. <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's a dinosaurs podcast but the thing is our episodes are like an hour to an hour and a half long usually mm. and it's because a lot of the plots are very good jumping off points for many conversations especially when we have different comedians and stuff on right um, right yeah that's yeah. true and we have a lot yep. of our like musician friends too so they get mm -hmm. we get that kind of perspective as well yeah yeah so. yeah they're good stuff true the storylines really do probably send you into some good conversations yeah like, a lot of stuff's super relevant currently still like i yeah. know in a scary way really it's it's you know a, a lot of the environmentalism like uh yeah. I, think, I think tim doyle said that the writer andy goodman brought a lot of that because he was deeply involved in it mm. and so that's still relevant you're seeing the things about like Earl pushing over all the trees so nobody can be too happy from all the extra oxygen. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. And we've only gotten worse as a society <laughs> since then. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's there's so many great topics in that in the show. Yeah. What um, sexual harassment? Oh, that that's my. I brought that up because like that character Gus is just sexual harass to me because I love that episode and he, I remember he loves sexual har harassment. I like, <laughs> <laughs> like, we did that episode with my fiance uh, because it's one of her favorite episodes too. And like, well, she just likes Monica. So anything yeah. with Monica, oh, well, she wants great. She wants to be on the episode. Oh, right. Um, I'm, I'm just shocked at how they knew to do a COVID episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's very prescient. I mean, yeah. and also they had, you know, Donald Trump as the boss that we say. So oh, wait, no, that, was, that was Sherman Helmsley. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is funny the comparisons that were made. Yeah, I've seen a video, just the line, like, there's so many of almost the same lines coming out of their mouths. Yeah, <laughs> so easy crazy. To juxtapose it. Yep, Whereas crazy. with with Earl, you only see him juxtaposed with, like, Biggie Small. Like, you see the... I haven't the, seen that one, but... There's a hypnotized uh -huh. music video. That's funny that you haven't seen it, because it's honestly, you star in it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> somebody somebody took a Biggie Small song and, like, coordinated to scenes of Earl dancing around and talking... <laughs> Oh really? Yeah. And, and it's pretty great. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I never saw that. Yeah, that's um, something that I think uh, you should look into in the future is bringing Earl out as a rapper. You think? Thinking, I mean, they still have the molds for those costumes. Right? No. No, I think if they do something, it'll probably be CG or something like that. You know? Yeah, I was wondering if this level of technology has existed in projects you've done since then, like the having the big machines on your head essentially in no i, I haven't like... been in a i haven't been in a suit well i was in one other suit uh dog after lion. earl you know it's <laughs> dog lion for the royal variety show but oh. other than that not just that you did um uh, oh muppets tonight no but sweetums and dog lion did they performed at the un with harry belafonte remember? oh the un yeah so three I'm times i've been in a suit after <laughs> so this dog line work similarly to how the earl's like costume works or is it no different? very different no okay. very different the dog line has a mouth that you move mm -hmm. like sweetums with your hand no electronics uh, just the eyes oh, cool. um okay what how did who well do you work the eyes from no, the no, side no. No, somebody okay. has a little controller and they do just like Sweetums. They do the eyes. Oh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. I have a... uh, but no, the, 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 they would never do it now like that. It'd just be too expensive to do yeah. something like that again. So, you know, you have things that like Henson has their, um, they have like a motion capture, motion control puppeteering, uh, thing that, that they use for animations and, and things like that. We used it on the happy time murders and, so I think they would create digital characters and have people in mocap suits that they, you know, would put the ca the the suit over that, mm -hmm. and then that's probably how they would do it now. That's 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 pretty interesting. So, so I didn't know about the Happy Time Murders until ten minutes before you came on the Zoom call. Actually, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Tim brought oh, it up to me. Well, that and... is that is really making its way out there. Yeah, to the <laughs> yeah, big hit. <laughs> 
you know, I was looking at it, I was just like, this looks like, I mean, I plan to watch it, like, later. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it looks very, like, Who Framed Roger Rabbity. Like, uh, it looks fun to me. It's It's got, <laughs> it definitely has fun stuff in it. They, I, I hate to, every time I talk about it, you know, I feel like I have to kind of do this disclaimer, which is it's not really what we shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is what we shot. The story isn't all there. They went more for, and not Brian, because Brian's vision was basically we shot a film that had all the story and character arcs and it was a full fledged kind of great film. And then Mm -hmm. people just got in there and they started to do things like add more shock value moments and take out some of the relationship stuff. Uh, and, and it just kind of, it lost its peaks and valleys, you know, Mm -hmm. it lost some of the guts. And, and so it's still fun. And there's stuff I think you'll probably really get a kick out of. And I had a blast mm-hmm. making it. I'll never forget it. And the people I've I worked with this, were great. But yeah, I've got this container of Happy there's... Time Murder Silly String. <laughs> yeah, <there's... laughs> when you see the movie, you'll understand why Silly String is such a hit. <laughs> okay. I, know, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. All I remember about that movie was it came out and people just like shit on it so bad. Like, I it was, know. It was, I, but I never saw it. So. Oh, you got to see it. You have yeah. to see it. Don't listen it's, to people. So you have to see it. it. Puppetry in it and all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, there's great puppetry. There's great dialogue. It's funny. That was there's a great, great stuff. Too. Yeah. It just sometimes people pile on. You know, it's like, and and for some of it's true. You know, like they the story just got thin, and 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 mm-hmm. it's because they made a bad decision of what to keep and what not to keep and what to push. You know, they wanted to just mm-hmm. push nasty puppets, and that's not really what we shot. It, yeah. It's in there. But that wasn't the crux of the film, you know. Mm-hmm. But you should definitely see it. You'll get a kick out of it. I, it's always surprising me. That, it's surprising that they pushed the nasty puppet side because I don't think that ever really works that well. Like I don't think it, so either. It doesn't have to be nasty to be adult either. Like I don't. I don't know. It's weird to me. Yeah, like dinosaurs yeah. is the perfect example. It's not. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this was definitely you know rated R. So so mm-hmm. there was things like and the, and there were intended shock moments there are are intentionally moments where you are supposed to go (laughs) yeah (laughs) what What? they're doing that you know (laughs) yeah just because that's part of it but that's not what the film is about and that's what got mixed was Mm -hmm. they should have let the film play as a real movie and let that stuff it's still going to be shocking you know (laughs) as little or as much as you put it in there less is more too you know so yeah i think they they just made some unfortunate choices and people jumped all over it and said, this is crap. And, and it's not really crap. It's just, it's a fun ride. Yeah. Fun was ride. enough, was enough sh- footage shot so that if for some, you know, uh, sometime in the future, if Brian ever wanted to do a director's cut, he could put it back into the form that he wanted it. Oh yeah. The whole film is, we that shot every, we shot the whole movie, you know? Okay, well, so he, good. if they ever wanted to pay for something, he certainly could do his director's cut, you know, but <laughs> I doubt we'll, they will. We'll do a podcast series pushing it called like the happy time murders murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who murdered the happy time murders. <laughs> Who murdered the happy time murders. That's great. We'll get our Ralph, we'll get our Ralph Nader on. But it's fun. Go watch it. You guys will get a kick out of it. There's fun stuff in it. And our, uh, and our grandfather is the lead role puppet. So. That's great. <laughs> um, something I wanted to bring up based on dinosaurs also on working after is, you know, they all die in the series finale, which I, of course, know, even though I'm not there yet. That's just the thing everyone knows about the show, really. Hmm. But uh, what would, in that terms, like a concept for like a reboot would have to be something along the lines of either different characters or prequel or they unfreeze, I guess. Like, <laughs> Yeah, or they were wrong. <laughs> yeah, or they were wrong. Maybe they don't die. Travel. It was just a bad winter. That's all. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you would do. I I guess if you really wanted the same characters, I think they just made a mistake. Mm-hmm. It was just, just a bad Park, storm. Maybe just some of their DNA is in a... Yeah, that's, that's a joke I had. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about basically bringing back the DNA that way, and then Earl's the one they recreate, and they have to deal with that. All right, and then Earl lives in two, 2022 or whatever. But, or maybe they're just the only the only they froze and they are unfrozen in like a biodome where people are watching them from the outside type situation as a like the Truman uh, Show. Of, <laughs> yeah, I just Truman watched show, that like a good. week ago. I rewatched that. It's still really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I just think. It. you oh, Sorry, go ahead. 
Oh, no, you go ahead. I was just saying I saw the Truman Show for the first time recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, good. I was just going to say, I, I think there's still, <laughs> you know, a lot of material to, uh, to, to, to make fun of in these times mm -hmm. that I think you could still be back there, you know, and do exactly what we did, which I thought was really successful. Their perspective mm -hmm. on the things that we are dealing with in our lives. You know, I think there's plenty that's happened in the last 30 years <laughs> that yeah. we could, we could make a lot of fun of, you know, Yeah. and they're great characters. I think people would love to see them again. So I, it'd be nice to bring them back and just say, oops, you know, <laughs> Richfield, I don't know, Richfield made a mistake or whatever. We saw they made a mistake and it was just a bad winner. What would, uh, I always just do the years leading up to the premiere of the old dinosaurs, mm -hmm. you know? That's yeah. what I was, that's what I, that, that's one of the, cause sometimes me and, me and Ben will joke around. We'll be like, yeah, hire us. We'll write the new dinosaurs. And it'll be like, <laughs> we were like, Di dinosaur babies. That's what I was well, thinking. The, <laughs> well, but, there, and, but then you can't have the baby if you're leading well, up Well, the to baby it. would be like in the form of the uncle who raises them or something. <laughs> uh, Same well, our, kind of character, but you know. Our friend Sarah believes that baby was actually earl's grandfather reborn for some reason she has a whole conspiracy theory <laughs> oh yeah it was more just a comment she threw out there but i'm just gonna accuse her of being like a baby truther yeah <laughs> but she thinks that it was like a relative of earl brought back reincarnated to make him miserable right <laughs> um buddy hackett you guys know who buddy hackett is yeah wasn't buddy hackett <laughs> grandpa louie in an episode yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep yeah. I don't cool. know why I just thought of him. Just <laughs> all the great character, all the people, the great actors we had, Tim Curry and Michael McKeon. And mm -hmm. he's not, I mean, so many great people that did voices. I'm excited for, the, I haven't gotten to the episode with Tim Curry yet. Wasn't Tim Curry was in the Muppet Treasure Island too, right? Yeah. He's yeah. Long John Silver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tim did quite a few things on dinosaurs, several characters. Yeah. The devil was one. <laughs> he did the, I don't know if you've seen the one with Charlene and her fox coat. Not yet. I think it's coming up. I think he does the voice of ben that character. Him, he did a bunch I, of them. I remember that yeah, Didn't Dinah Shore come on as a guest? No, we did a, I went, we did something for her on there her show. There was something shot on the set with her. Yeah. 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 It was a commercial. Oh, it was a commercial, I think. The Dinah mm -hmm. Shore, I, it was some kind of thing we did. A promotion for your show. Was yeah, that? that's right. Okay. It was a promotion, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Ben, do we have any... Um, I I don't really have... I have one more question, but I'll save it. Um, You'll save for it when? For when? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> do, you guys have, are you, do you guys have plans without me later? <laughs> <laughs> ben... Uh, um, do we have? Well, like, were you, were you any... giving me some a chance to ask, ask some questions that people want yeah, us to ask? It, do, do we have any? If, that... if you guys are fine with that, I got some. Questions. We'll just save our answers. Yeah, save your answers. <laughs> Maybe a couple more because we're like going on our hour two, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's what Tim was implying is that he wants to <laughs> appreciate wrap, it. wrap it up and throw in his uh, last question. Okay. But yeah. uh, do you want do you want to answer a couple questions from people that just like short? Sure. Things that thanks. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, let's let's see. We got one. Uh, my Ali B wants to know if animal is cool in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The puppet or the person who does it? I I yes. assume the, the, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah either way, yes, right? Questions? Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> What's funny is I t told our listeners and fans and friends to send in questions, and mostly it was just like. Tell them I love them. And it was, it was oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. Or, it, or they were just sarcastic instead and sent goofy things like, have you met baby Yoda? Have you met Yoda? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes and, uh, well, let's see, no and yes. Yeah, you've met Yoda. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, um, there, is a, there is a good one that we should save, so I'm just going to get mine out of the way. Uh, okay. Oh. Oh, I forgot what Tim's was going to be. This is why Tim wants to get into this. Oh, so, 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 Bill, there is an episode of Monday Night Raw, WWE Monday Night Raw, and the yeah. Muppets are the, are the, the hosts of the show. Were you right. there or no? Did you have any involvement in that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you did it. I can't remember what I did, but I think yeah, I was there. <laughs> how, how yeah. was that experience? Because it looked, it looked... It looked fun. Like I did. Oh, I never saw it when it premiered. They're live. great people. They're what a fun group. 
to hang out with. They really are fun and really nice people. Like, you know, they, they have all their characters, you know, just like we do. I mean, they really are mm -hmm. the Muppets in a way. They just wrestle, you know. <laughs> but there's we, all these yeah, great characters. That's um, what I was saying when I was asking you questions about doing the puppeteering. I was like, I was thinking of wrestling. I'm like, oh, no, he's telling me how the magic's made. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, um, uh, oh, God. Uh, pot, uh, oh, God, what's his name? That's terrible. Dylan. Dylan, Dylan Postel. Yes. Yeah. Great guy. <laughs> Great guy. Um, he did uh, Muppets did Most Pepe Wanted. on that. I'm looking at it right now. You did Pepe, at least, and there were a lot of other people, oh, cool. a lot of other characters in there. Yeah, yeah. it had uh, Kermit and Piggy did, like, the opening with, like... Yeah, there was did... Gonzo and Riz Rizzo and Pepe at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we, it was fun. Fun to do. A lot of people, you know, people go nuts. Oh, can you do a goat? There's a goat here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I did a goat for something. Yeah. It's probably Daniel Bryan or something. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, that was a goat. Yeah, like, because like, it's really cool, too, because, like, the opening, like, segment is, like, Piggy and Kermit, and they're behind, like, a giant LED sign. Oh, yeah. And, and then they, like, come out, and they do the whole promo with <laughs> with Jack Swagger and stuff like that. It's... It's right. great. I just watched yeah. it today. I want to watch Jim's the oh, wrestling episode. Fan. Yeah, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I thought that oh, was... Oh, yeah. Gene and I were... We, we used to do wrestling when we were kids. That We would... Uh, when it was, when it was new. <laughs> Vince McMahon was a skinny, scrawny interviewer. You know? <laughs> yeah. And he would always get beat up and made fun of and teased. And so Gene created this whole... Um, a wrestling ring in the bait in our base in our basement <laughs> and on the back wall he painted this mural of all the of audience members it had like different characters from movies and things that's and, so awesome <laughs> and then we like, we did jimmy a whole wrestling snooka, thing jimmy snooker bob Backlin, uh Hacksaw jim duggan superstar <laughs> billy graham yeah like all but we had rj city on our show oh david oh, arquette yeah, yeah. That's david awesome. arquette, david arquette. arquette. Yep. Yeah. RJ yeah. City is amazing. Like that guy is hilarious. He's the one who was okay. So I'm less involved in wrestling than Tim is. Involved, but it it, <laughs> it comes up in our podcast a lot, and we have different hosts from podcasts about wrestling come on. But I watch like this documentary about David Arquette. Is it RJ City the one who was in that, Tim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a great friends. documentary, isn't yeah. it? Oh, it was so good. He was the guy yeah. he he like feuded with, like on yeah. Twitter and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really they're crazy. great friends. You should watch our episode. You'll love it, Tim. It's yeah. really good. I'll, I'll have That's to check, awesome. I'll have to check it out. But, but yeah, that that was just that was just really interesting. And then you got to be backstage and stuff. So that must have been. <laughs> oh yeah, we you know, we and and then what's fun is that the people love the Muppets. You know, like mm -hmm. they were so excited to be playing with us, and <laughs> and vice versa. It was just such a great experience. We had so much fun. Such nice people. Uh, and actually, in that RJ City one and David uh, interview that we did, we show some home movies of our wrestling yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. you'll, you'll see that in there, too. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll, so, we'll yeah. Put a link to that in our episode oh, and, description. And remember, this Hulk Hogan was with us in Muppets from Space. That's right. Another great guy oh, yeah. to work with, you know? Was that, like, was that crazy for you, like, growing up, like, a wrestling fan to, to work with? Well, he, he was, you know, he, he got big later. Mm -hmm. uh, we were i'm talking i'm talking about the 70s when we would watch you know wrestling and yeah uh andre the giant and you know when they were all new and young and yeah um but Hulk, oh, you know, what sorry i was gonna say you know who i worked with once and not directly but i was i was on the in the art department of uh, phil collins was touring the country and as he toured the country he was shooting scenes for a tv special and he did he did a a scene with the ultimate warrior yeah. and the two of them were in a ring oh, singing together i've seen that yeah. uh he, he's a muppet in himself you know the ultimate warrior he's just yeah. <laughs> well, on that scene. Was, and that's you know, working on that. yeah but so yeah so, so hulk's fame came later i wasn't really into wrestling you know mm -hmm. just a nice guy to meet yeah i forgot he was in muppets in space i forgot yeah it's pretty that. brief it's a great cameo yeah and and then dylan of course is in that uh, he's in the second movie, the Muppets movie. Most Wanted. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the prisoners, and yeah, and we got to play with him in other, <laughs> you know, before that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna, awesome. I was gonna say though, I think, I think for a good, 
final question here, then. Uh, we have your sister. <laughs> your sister. Wait, Mich my sister? Your, oh. You said my, my si your sister. I forgot Mich about that sister. Your sister, Michelle, mm -hmm. wants to know, uh, what is your best Jim Henson memory? Huh. Oh, I have one. What's yours, Billy? Go ahead. You tell yours. Uh, well, I don't know. This might be yours, too. Because we, uh, you know, Brian would come to visit. He was working in, in England in the 80s a lot. And he would come back to New York and we'd visit and get together. And so one day we drove up to meet him up in New York. And it wasn't until we parked the car we said, wait a minute, we're going to the Sherry Netherlands. Could that be Jim's apartment? And we went upstairs. I remember too the de one detail. You knocked on the door, and when Brian came to it, there was a, uh, a like a spyglass peephole thing, and he moved it around like it was a live eye. <laughs> it was really cool. So we went in, and Jim was there with like five, six other friends, and so we hung out with Jim and all these people for like an hour or something. And I was helping him try to figure out what some signs. Uh, he couldn't read some signs across. Central Park, and we were trying to work on that together. So that was my favorite memory. Mm. I think mine's when I first met him ever, and I was working at Sesame Place, and I was working. I've told this story before. Maybe you've heard it, but I don't know. Uh, I won't try to do it quickly. So I was working. Uh, they had just installed these new animatronic characters in the park. They had an Oscar the Grouch in a trash can. And the, the lid would come up and he would come out, this you know automated character, and he would talk mm -hmm. and then he'd do a song and then he'd go away. And so as an employee there, you had to stand with it and make sure nobody touched it or messed with it. And it happened to be located in what was called the food factory. And the food factory had all these big open windows and it faced the front of the park. So you could see the front gate from there about 50 yards away maybe. And so I'm standing there and I'm, you know, watching Oscar and watching people watch Oscar. And I look out the window and I can see Jim coming through the front gate. I recognized him. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, oh. And I thought, I, uh, I left. So I <laughs> left my position and I ran to the front gate and I welcomed him. You know, I was like, hello, Mr. Henson. Welcome to Sesame Street or Sesame Place. And he was like, oh, thanks. Thanks very much. He, and he said, uh, uh, do you happen to know where the uh, Oscar uh, in the trash can is? I was like, do I? Do I? <laughs> right this way. He's my coworker. <laughs> so I, so I, I escorted him over to the, the, you know, we went into the food factory and I showed him where it was. And I basically went back to my position and I just watched him watching people and i just remember that so well wow. him just sitting there and just observing and nobody really recognized him nobody said anything to him and i just loved enjoying watching him observing how the people were enjoying it you know that's so cool and then he was like oh, thanks a lot you know and it's like oh yeah <laughs> and I like that little voice you're trying to do with him. well that's how he, that's uh, how i hear him you know that's what i remember it's just very like soft you know just kind of like that and uh and i just remember thinking that he didn't come in as a VIP, you know? Mm -hmm. I remember thinking this, I thought he just walked through the front gate. This guy could have come in through the back and he could have been, you know, met by the general manager and made a whole thing and, mm -hmm. but he didn't, he just came in. And I just always remember that as being such a humble thing, you know, that wow. he just, he didn't think of himself that way, you know? That's my favorite memory. I got this That's real beautiful. quick. I just sent him a letter when I was 14. Oh, wow. And he sent me back asking him how to make puppets. And he sent me back a letter with instructions on how to make puppets. That's wow. awesome. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. That's so That's, cool. that's incredible. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah, I, I mean, that. Uh, I think your sister, Michelle, Ben, asked a, a great question that mm -hmm. had a good one to kind of uh, end this interview thank you michelle yeah <laughs> great question yeah thank you so much um yeah thanks thanks for doing this with us uh it was really cool obviously we've been obsessively watching your work for a while now when doing this so <laughs> i apologize it was, cool to... yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cool to get to talk to both of you yeah well thanks guys thanks for having us on i appreciate it, it was yeah. fun hey welcome to the end of the episode with just me and Timmy now. It's it's just us. No Beretta brothers. No Beretta brothers. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining us for this interview. It's a very long episode. 
Zach is already, we're, while we're recording this, Zach's like, you want to make it a two-parter? And no, fuck he's, you, Zach. He's pissed. <laughs> so we, we don't take notes from our producer <laughs> who produces for free. But um, That's right. <clears throat> yeah, but we just had a great conversation and we got to talk to Earl Sinclair, the suit guy himself, and, you know, Pepe the Prawn and Bobo the Bear and the author Gene Beretta, like it's that's super cool. Yeah. Plus, we learned that that Gene auditioned for Fran. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I that's like one that. of the biggest takeaways from this episode, I think. Uh, I mean, that and the you'll hear it in the obviously you already heard You've it. You've already heard it. Tim, yeah. This, this happens I immediately. Know. After. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Even it's funny too because we're actually recording this in time. Like we just yeah. finished the interview, yeah. really, and you but... and you're fucking up the timeline. Bill's Bill's story about Jim Henson and meeting Brian and stuff like that. It's, it's cool. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really cool. Super cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely go check out the Beretta Brothers podcast. You know, we've watched the episodes about the dinosaurs, so you can find those all on there. They yeah. have interviews with, like, everybody. They're fantastic. Um, you'll you'll learn so much. You'll learn even more than what we just got out of Bill. It's great. And we so. learned that there's an episode with David Arquette. <laughs> yeah, of the podcast. I... Haven't that's seen it. That's crazy. I didn't I'm know that. Here. Yeah. That's right. That's right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. It's really great. And they also have one with uh Stuart uh Stuart who did the voice of Yeah, Stuart of Bacon. Earl. I just I just watched that one and it was really cool. I recommend that. They all kind of grew up near each other and didn't really know that. They are a little bit different in age, but they're all Philly boys. <laughs> yeah. And uh also uh the versions that I watched were all on YouTube. Uh, so if it's hard for you to watch a podcast on YouTube, they're about to launch on like us, like on any podcast catcher that you use. Yeah, so they they said something about iTunes. Um, what I'm assuming they'll go everywhere. If it doesn't, I'll just email Gene and do it for him because <laughs> I'll be I'll be like his his son Ben who was helping him with audio early <laughs> in the video. I'll be the other Ben, but. Yeah. Uh, I, it definitely it's a fun podcast. It deserves to be on every platform so everyone can catch it. Yeah, it's a lot of so, fun, and we had fun with them. And I hope. Oh yeah, and we found out Gene was in a band that had ska songs. That's right. See, we're always bringing that, it back. That's always. fucking phenomenal. Everyone has a, <laughs> everyone has a checkered past, as a, <laughs> as Woody as as our good friend Woody would say yeah. sometimes. I think. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and uh, thanks for our friends who submitted questions. You know, we had a lot that I didn't get to ask, and a lot of them didn't make sense. Like, they were fun to throw out, but, like, <laughs> everyone was mostly goofing around and just being like, you got any dirt on Snuffleupagus? And it's like, yeah, okay. This, this is, <laughs> because... <laughs> Have you ever met Baby Yoda? Yeah, <laughs> Baba Yada. <laughs> and Richard, Richard Dick Long, we did not get to your question at all. <laughs> Yeah, even though Tim wanted to say your name really bad, but it's a it's a <laughs> fake name. Obviously. But uh, he Richard Dick Long did want to know why the Graptolites still haunt him at age thirty four. I don't know. And, uh, Ask they Zach. also haunt our producer, <laughs> <laughs> Zach. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we still you know thanks for the people we did get to put on. Thanks, uh, Sarah Shockey, Adel Rafai, uh, Katie Michelle, uh, my sister Michelle Miners. I think we, uh, I think that's all the questions that we got to do from our friends. I just want to make sure that uh, I mentioned them at the end here to thank them. Uh, you, I think you used one. Oh, of and my friend Allie. Phil, I think you used Phil's. Oh yeah, Phil Horseman. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank all of you for just listening to our podcast. We don't thank you enough because we assume you're not there, but our numbers show that there are some people there. <laughs> <laughs> the boys at corporate say there's at least 30 of you each episode. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and thanks to Jeremy from Scotty network for doing our theme song. It's a ska song, just like the brother brothers podcast. Theme <laughs> song. Uh, and thanks to Amy shenanigans for doing the artwork with us. Uh, you know, my little collab with Amy for that artwork, which Tim recently told me he liked. I don't remember if that's ever come up before. Recently? Yeah, I think we were having a conversation. You're, you said that the puppets make it, like, tie it together real nice. Oh, we did that with Justin. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> I liked it the first time you showed it to me. <laughs> but... See, you, you you are somebody who only regular like reacts to a lot of stuff on Facebook, but you heart react stuff in the chats. So I never know. And you actually, we ska react everything in the chat, so we never know where we're at. <laughs> 
Yeah, every time you Zach, hit... Zach George is somebody who's never used the React on Facebook, so I never know what he's thinking. Every time you hit the emoji, it's just the opening a horn part to the impression that I get. <laughs> That's what I was thinking in my head, too. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> but, uh, and thanks to... Speaking of Zach, thanks to our producer, Zach George, for, you know, going along with us for all this shit. Yeah. And uh, also, I think he just he's quitting Home Depot. So, like, fucking rock on. Yeah, we should all tell everyone what Home Depot he works at, Ben. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't work there anymore. He's he's going to be making his money doing stuff that he likes to do. Yeah, but not from us. He's not going to still not yeah, gonna no. get any money from us. I mean, like, <laughs> I think we made a deal that once we hit six figures... <laughs> we'll give him a pizza party. Three, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have a pizza party for him. <laughs> He'll get but, three, uh, three dollars. Yeah. That is yeah. three dollars, <laughs> three dollars or three slices. It's up to him. <laughs> but no but, toppings, yeah, we, no toppings. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, oh yeah. Also, thanks uh, Jacob Tippy for answering my question about whether his mom worked with Bill or not. I that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll have his mom uh sherry on the podcast soon hopefully yeah and uh <laughs> check out that episode of monday night raw with the muppets it's it's pretty great <laughs> i want to do an episode about it um, yeah we will yeah we got a lot of bonuses planned this show only went for 65 episodes and i think we're going to try to at least get 80 out of ours so that's right <laughs> unless disney cancels us yeah <laughs> but so, uh, uh luckily we're not peppy Le Pew. Peppy Le Pew. Luckily, we're not Fuck Peppy him. the Frog either. Fuck him. <laughs> There's no. only one good Pepe, and it's the Frog. Pepe the Frog. So, uh, That's right. Everybody, in- enjoy your extinction. Mm-hmm. Thanks for hanging out. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>